Cause Earl had to die When you think about the most popular female music groups of all time, who comes to mind? Destiny's Child, The Andrews Sisters, The Supremes. But you may be surprised to find out the Dixie Chicks are right up there with the most successful of all time. At one point in history, they weren't just big, they were one of the biggest groups in all of music. But now, today, the group isn't exactly at the top of the charts. In fact, the Dixie Chicks as you knew them no longer exist. So what happened to call such a dramatic fall from superstardom? Today, we're digging into the rise and meteoric fall of the Dixie Chicks. We'll discover exactly what happened to unseat the undisputed queens of country music. And while you may think you know their story, there is a lot you probably don't. Before we get to the details, remember to hit that thumbs up icon if you enjoyed the ride. And subscribe to the channel for new videos like this. Let's go find out where the Dixie Chicks are today. Are they still around? Do they dare make music? Stay tuned and find out. What, what happened? happened? The Dixie Chicks on top. Like I said, it's kinda hard to remember how huge the Dixie Chicks were at their peak. From their inception in the early 90s to the tip-top peak at the turn of the century, the Dixie Chicks slowly garnered a massive fan base doing everything you're not supposed to do. While country music was slowly turning sleeker, shinier, and poppier, these girls were looking back to bluegrass and roots music while their peers were embracing fancy clothes and more modern lifestyles. The Dixie Chicks were performing in cowboy hats and making a name for themselves on the honky-tonk circuit. But the labels didn't want to take a chance on an all-chick band. Hey, I only said that because they're the Dixie Chicks. But these gals were pretty different. Put bluntly, they were the kind of group that was supposed to play for peanuts at a raggedy shack on the side of a highway. They weren't geared to be thrust into pop stardom, and it took years for the Dixie Chicks to gain recognition. But once it came, it came fast. Once they got a chance to listen, audiences did not reject the chicks and their quirks. Their fan base embraced them wholeheartedly. The band got their hands on a record deal brought Natalie Maines on board and quickly shot up the charts. What made it work was their combination of bluegrass, blues, roots, pop, and of course, good old fashioned country. They really appealed to a lot of Americans all over the country, and it seemed that nothing could slow down the Dixie Chicks' rise. But then, something happened that did change the course of their career, and the nation forever. The controversy. The year was 2003 and Americans were still reeling from the brutal terrorist attacks on their nation on September 11, 2001. President George Bush had just announced that he would be sending troops into Iraq. It really was a scary and uncertain time in America. Country musicians put up a united front in support of their country and the war. Toby Keith mocked Saddam Hussein at his concerts. Patriotic tunes such as Have You Forgotten, Red, White, and Blue, and Iraq and Roll climbed up the charts. For many, it was a unifying and beautiful moment in our country's history, when people of all backgrounds came together to support the troops. But not everybody felt that way. The Dixie Chicks were about to change their lives and shock the nation with just a few simple words. It was March at a concert in London when singer Natalie Maines announced, quote, Just so you know, we're on the good side with y'all. We do not want this war, this violence. And we're ashamed that the President of the United States is from Texas. Just so you know, we're ashamed the President of the United States is from Texas. Well, outrage quickly swept across the US and people all over, especially country music fans, took issue with Natalie's statement. Some felt that she was traitorous for denouncing the president, while others felt that it was disrespectful to the troops to oppose the war. The backlash was prompt and intense. And maybe it was a coincidence, but the Dixie Chicks' latest release fell off the charts like a brick of shit off a cliff. 
Radio stations refused to play their songs. Fans burned their albums. In Louisiana, people rented a tractor to destroy thousands of the Dixie Chicks' albums. To get a sense of just how united the nation was in their anger towards the Chicks, consider that both their tour bus driver and the T brand Lipton broke ties with the group. Apologies, apologies. The Dixie Chicks expected to receive some criticism for their remarks. It was a free country after all, I mean heck that's why they could say what they wanted to say. But they hadn't calculated on the amount of backlash they received. Just two days after her initial remarks, Natalie softened on her comments, saying she did support the troops but she didn't support the war. Critics were not appeased in the slightest. People weren't convinced that the Dixie Chicks had the best interest of the country in mind. So the Dixie Chicks reconvened and decided to give a real apology this time, apologizing to the president for their disrespectful remarks. Natalie called herself a proud American who was simply frustrated with the vehement support for the war. This much I do kind of remember, but what happened next? Did the country and their country music fans forgive them? The Dixie Chicks and Toby Keith Well, the country did not forgive Natalie and said that her apology was too little too late. What did the president have to say? He was less than thankful. He went on TV to say they technically had the right to say what they wanted, but that Americans also had the right to punish them for it. Had their feelings hurt just because some people don't want to buy their records. They shouldn't have their feelings hurt. What a Yikes. By this time, half the big names in country had also weighed in. One of the most notable incidents involved Toby Keith. Toby, who had been displaying mocking images of Saddam Hussein at his concerts for a while now, began putting up pictures of Natalie alongside the tyrant, claiming that she was just as bad as he was. Jeez, wow, okay. The chicks added fuel to the fire by wearing t-shirts at their shows emblazoned with F-U-T-K, a slogan that they jokingly claimed meant friends united in truth and kindness. But what it really meant was F you, Toby Keith. Well, not too much came of the feud after that. And not every name in country music was so against the chicks. Country music legend and outlaw Merle Haggard said that while he wasn't familiar with their music, he certainly respected the rights of the chicks to say whatever they wanted, even if it was disrespectful towards the president. But Merle's defense didn't come until a while after the damage had already been done. The Fallout after that point, it seemed the Dixie Chicks were finished. Sure, they still played shows for a while and they gained a few fans from the controversy too. They got some big spots on magazine covers and the like. But most of these new admirers were from outside country music. People who appreciated that the Chicks had confronted the musical establishment. But in Nashville, the Chicks were persona non grata for years. They were unwelcome. The Chicks did continue to put out music for a while and received some attention for their 2006 album, but there was no coming back from the cataclysmic events of 2003. Where are the Chicks today? Since the incident, the Dixie Chicks have stayed busier than you may imagine. In 2010, McGuire and Strayer formed a side project without Natalie Maines called The Courtyard Hounds. Some fans feared that this meant Natalie left the band, especially as she released a solo album a few years later. But the rumors were unfounded, and the Dixie Chicks continued to tour all over the world. And in 2020, they went a step further. They released a new album entitled Gaslighter, this time under the name The Chicks. It was their first album in 14 years and it actually got pretty good reviews. Rolling Stone gave it three stars and said it's their poppiest and most honest album ever. Hmm. Maybe I'll give it a listen. All three women seem to be doing fine in their personal lives. All three are married and all three have children. So the Dixie Chicks or the Chicks seem to be doing fine. But it's undeniable that they've fallen a long way from their peak 20 years ago. And it's uncertain and quite honestly unlikely to return to that level of popularity. 
but I want to know what you think. Were you once a Dixie Chicks fan who has turned the other cheek? Or did you give them the benefit of the doubt of free speech? What is their best song, their best album? Who has seen them perform live? And to anyone who has heard the Chicks' new album, Gaslighter, how is it? Get in the comments and tell me all. But before you go, please hit the thumbs up icon if you don't mind, it really helps. Subscribe to our channel and come back often so we can keep telling you what happened.